in your materials. You know, the bio I like to give George is in my interaction, kind of like, you know, the strategic partner. We're people people, you know. We like to interact at a certain level, and, and that's what I would say about George. He's, a, he's one of us, uh, he's easy to talk to, but he's smarter than us. <laughs> So that's why we like to bring people like that in. So with that, I hand you off into the beautiful hands of George Ira Carroll. Morning, friends. All right, everybody on your feet, please. All right, so just get some energy in your body and just shake it up a little bit. I'm going to have you do a couple of cheesy exercises to get our day started. All right, the first one is clap your hands and interlace your fingers. Some of you may have already done this. Ready? One, two, three, go. Notice and show your neighbor which thumb is on top. All right. Now, unlace your fingers and interlace your fingers again with the other thumb on top. Ready? One, two, three. What did you notice? Just yell. It's uncomfortable. What else? You missed the finger. What else? The fingers are different. You had to be conscious. You had to be conscious. What else? It's uncomfortable. It's unnatural. So think about it this way. What if how we do anything is how we do everything? Has anybody ever heard of before? How we do anything is how we do everything. And it, is that being practical? Yeah. Yes. Can you just use the handout so we can use all of it? Yeah, I can do that. That way, we think it might be the left there itself. Okay. But we got, we'll have to have work. And sometimes that's what happens in life, right? Things show up and you just got to go with the flow, don't you? All right, so what else did you notice when you interlace your fingers with the other thumb on top? Just yell some words out. You had to think about it. High probability of error. High probability of error. <laughs> All right, now what I want you to do is cross your arms and notice which arm is on top. All right, now uncross your arms and cross them the other way. Awkward. What, is, what are some other words that describe that for you? Weird. Say it again. Weird. Weird. Yeah, what else? <laughs> Alright, go ahead and have a seat. So isn't this kind of interesting? It's the process of change, isn't it? And so sometimes, isn't the process of doing things a little bit different uncomfortable? Isn't it sometimes weird? Isn't it sometimes awkward? And so what I want to invite you to take a look at today is how do we get into a place where we might be a little bit uncomfortable, but can create some change? Because do we all know the definition of insanity by this point? Yeah, all right, I'll say the first part, you guys say the second part, all right? So the definition of insanity says doing the same things over and over and... How many of you have mastered this at some point in your life? Yeah, so those of you who aren't, raise your hands, are also liars. <laughs> All right, so is it okay if we have some fun today? Everybody in for some fun? All right, so just give your neighbor a high five and say, let's have some fun. <laughs> so, I'm really humbled to be here and to share this information with you. And the cool thing is that your story has value, doesn't it? Is that your story has impact. Do you recognize that? And do you know that your story is a unique, energetic blueprint that nobody else on this planet has? How cool is that? So I'm just a kid, right, from Pueblo, Colorado, as you can see some of my pictures here. Anybody ever been to Pueblo? Yeah, small city, and at a very tender age of three or four years old, I tried on my first football helmet, and something just felt right about it. 
You know, I held my first football when I was four years old, if you can imagine, and I just fell instantly in love with this game of football. My, when I was five years old, I watched Super Bowl 20. Remember that game, anybody? Remember that Super Bowl? Bears beat the heck out of the Patriots. But there was something in that game that just pulled me in, right? And from a young age, my passion, my dream, my vision was to play professional football. Now, I know you're looking at my massive 5'7 frame and thinking, gosh, he really does have the build for it. You know, what I did have was the heart for it. How many of you know you've got some big hearts in here? And you can see it, right? You can see it in the people's passion and when they, when they share. And so I was five years old. I watched this game. I fell in love, and my idol growing up was Jerry Rice. Anybody know Jerry Rice? Oh, yeah, his work ethic. So I just followed him and did everything he did. I got to college, and my work ethic paid off. I ended up breaking a lot of records in the, in the record books for receptions and yards and touchdowns. And my, my, my work and my, my dedication got me a full-ride scholarship to Northern Colorado and Greeley, Colorado. And I, my vision was, was really coming together, right? It was, it was happening. You know, I was in college, and I was breaking records in college, too. And so my first uh, sophomore year went all-conference, second year went all-conference, and three years in a row I was all-conference, and then I was, if you can imagine, it's a kind of a gloomy day, right? It's really cloudy. And I'm a wide receiver, so I'm, you know, part of my job is to catch balls, score touchdowns, and also block defenders. So I'm 95 yards short of our school record for yards in a career. Everybody? Ooh. <laughs> I'm 95 yards short of our school record for yards in a career, and it's a run play, right? So the run play is coming from behind me, and I'm sitting here blocking my guy, blocking my guy, blocking my guy. All of a sudden, the runner gets tackled from behind. And my right leg is firmly planted into the ground, and guess where he gets tackled? right on my leg and just it literally breaks my leg instantly it breaks my ankle instantly <sighs> and it broke my heart you know my, a childhood dream of vision had come instantly to an end for me and the physical pain didn't compare to the emotional pain that I felt of a childhood dream coming to an end and I had no idea what I wanted to do after that. So I graduated with a communication degree, no clue what I wanted to do, moved to Denver, I got into corporate selling, and I was just so hungry and determined to succeed that within about six months, I moved into a, a sales manager position. I was managing a team of about 10 salespeople. And I was also moving further away from my own integrity and my own values being led by autocratic leaders who are very abusive, emotionally and mentally abusive, using employees as a number to hit their bottom line. And after two and a half years, even though I was making a lot of money as a 24-year-old, I fell into a deep state of depression. I remember lying and I resigned because I wasn't emotionally fit to lead people anymore. I just wasn't. So I resigned. And I remember laying on in the fetal position in my bed, crying, like just sobbing. And I started asking questions to God or the universe or whatever's out there or in here. So why am I here? What's my purpose? You know, because this isn't fun for me. And something's got to change. So fortunately, I found myself in Denver Public Library in the personal development section. And I pulled out a book that said Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. Anybody familiar with this book? That book changed my life. The idea that was presented to me was that you can literally direct your thoughts, direct your emotion, and direct your behaviors to create anything that you want in life. That concept never really hit my brain until that moment. And then I went on this media fast. I said, okay, I'm doing this personal development thing. I shut off my TV. I shut off the music, and I just start feeding my brain with personal development. I read book after book, and I read a book called Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. Anybody familiar with that book? It's a fantastic book. It teaches you the power of visualization. So when I was resigning from my job, a lot of my, um, the people that I was managing said, you should be a motivational speaker. You should be a motivational speaker. And the third time that somebody said it, I finally heard it, and I said, ah, okay. And so I started going in my mind daily and imagining me in front of large audiences. And I had no idea how it was going to happen. But I started imagining myself in front of large audiences, inspiring and impacting people in a, in a positive way. And I just knew that 
going into those, the, that future reality that I wanted to create was far more pleasurable than the pain that I was feeling at the time. And so over the course of the years, and does anybody know the power of what's called your reticular activation system in your brain? So has anybody ever got a new car and all of a sudden you started to see them everywhere you go? Now the interesting question is, are those, were those cars always there? Yeah. What happens is we focus on our car, right? We focus, we're happy, we're excited, we call our friends, we can't wait to ride it, can't wait to drive it, can't wait to take it up into wherever we want to take it. And then we start to literally program our brain to see more of what we're focusing on. And then all of a sudden we say, oh man, these, these cars are everywhere, right? And that's a lot how our brain works when it comes to setting goals and say having a vision is that when you consistently see it, your brain is gonna start to be a radar to connect with people, experiences, ideas, books, and really whatever it takes for you to have that vision. And so, as we fast forward to the present moment, five years ago I started my business, my first workshop, guess how many people showed up? Four people, four people. And I got a glimpse of the vision that I created five years ago when I was totally down and depressed. And as I look back on my life, I start to realize that without the struggle, without the pain, it wouldn't have given me you know, the, the, the emotional tug to go out and search for something. How many of you have been in a rock bottom place in your life? And what if that rock bottom place, by sharing it, by communicating it to your potential clients, to your friends, and to the world, can actually inspire others to their greatness? What if your story has value? What if your story can change people's lives? And what if your story can connect you with other people faster and farther than you ever have before? So over the course of the day, I'm really pumped because we're gonna be able to look at how do we share our purpose story? And I'm just curious, why is it important to share your purpose story? Yeah, just yell it out. Oh. Kind of let everybody know we all come from the same place, we all have the same story, Yeah, good, thank you. What else? Yes, it's humanizing. It's humanizing, yeah. What else? It puts you on common ground. It puts you on common ground, makes you vulnerable. Awesome, let's take a quick time out. Check, 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 good. Make connections. What else? Perfectly put. So stories engage people in an emotional way like nothing else. And do you realize that people make choices from emotion and they justify with logic? And not only that, but when you're telling stories, especially your purpose story, what happens is people start to connect with you and trust you at a deeper level. Makes sense. Cool. So how many of you are excited to learn your purpose story? And I'm curious, how many of you feel more connected to me in that 10 minutes than you did before. Yeah, and that's what you can create in your workshops. So whether you're a team member or whether you're an attorney, um, you want to know why is it that you do what you do? And the short version of it, you're going to learn too. So when people ask me, you know, how did you get into being a professional speaker and trainer? And I tell them the short answer is depression. I spent two and a half years in the corporate world and I got really depressed and I knew something had to change. And so we can give your neighbor a high five and say, I can't wait to hear your story. <laughs>